Okay, today we're going to install the Design Hardware 2000V exit device. The 2000V is a vertical rod panic bar that attaches on the push side of the door. We're going to attach the bar onto an LE08 lever. It's a very substantial piece of hardware. It's a really nice lever. We've already got the lever attached to the door. It's a lever through bolts. Four bolts, bolts in, and then it's got a, a very large star-shaped tailpiece comes through to attach to the exit device. First thing we want to do is go ahead and take the exit device. We've got the bar on it. The bar goes into the star-shaped shaft, or an X, whatever you want to call it. I always like to take the bar out of the device when I'm installing it. Well, you just have to slide the square shaft right back into the trim handle. Goes in there very simply. There you go, jumped right in. Now we want to take a couple screws. You want to go ahead and screw that head of that panic device onto the door to hold it in place. For this demonstration, our door has been pre drilled, got a lot of holes in it from some other demonstrations. So we're just going to work with what we've got, run that in there. Now, if you got one screw in it, it'll hang. I like to go ahead and put the second screw in the bottom. That way you're just kind of done with it. Tilt it up, line it up, get it where you want it, and go. Now, we'll put the end bracket and the end on it. So you can see it moves quite a bit. What you want to do, take a level, take it on there. A lot of guys use a plumb, plumb level. I'll just use a little level in my square, line it up. You want to bring it up level, you want to mark it. Mark it. There you go. When I mark it, I put my mark on the inside of the panic bar and onto the door. So you can line that up later. You don't want to put a whole bunch of pencil marks on the door. This is just a hollow metal prime. It's going to get painted. But if you're working on like a Mesker pre-painted door or a nice wood door, you don't want a whole lot of pencil marks on it. You got to try to take off later. So now I'll go ahead and take the end bracket. The end bracket has four holes in it. The two large holes are where you attach it to the door. The two smaller threaded holes are where you put the end cap back on it when we're ready. So I want to go ahead and line it up with my mark, put my end bracket on there, and go ahead and screw it in place. We'll use the same large self-drilling, self-tapping screws that we used to attach the head. On a metal door, it's the best thing to do. We've got that attached. Now the bar is basically on there. We've got the bar on there. We've got the trim on here. We're ready to put the top and bottom latch on there. Top and bottom latch are quite different. You notice the bottom bracket is really just a bracket with a large hole in it where the strike will drop through. The top is a true latch. So can't get them mixed up, can't confuse them. Now, to lay out your top latch, you want to use the, the template from Design Hardware. You need to put a center mark on the door. You need to get your center mark off the bottom of your trim head down here. Edge of the door to the center is two and a quarter. You want to come up here and you want to mark your center at two and a quarter. Then I'll always take my square. I like to set it at two and a quarter. Go ahead and give myself a nice pencil mark there that I keep my eye on. Now remember, your hardware will cover most of that. If you're working on a nice mesker pre-painted door, you don't want to get too carried away with your marks. Now that you've got your center mark on here at two and a quarter, you need to close the door, work on the inside of the door. With that door closed, once you pull it closed, you want to take your template. I've modified this template a little bit. What I do is I cut like a V shape out of it so I can find my center line after I fold it. Fold it on there. With the door closed completely, you line your V up on your center line, you fold up there, and then I mark those holes. I'll go ahead and let the door swing open just a little bit so I can hold it in place. And then I'll mark those three holes for that. Then I'll bring the door closed again. Now I'll hold my template on my stop. With my template on my stop, I can mark my three holes for my strike. The same way, just mark them. There we go. Now we've got the top laid out and the bottom. Now we'll go back on the other side of the door. And we'll attach the hardware. 
Like I said, the top latch is easily distinguishable from the bottom latch. If you want to get our screws, go ahead and attach it. Now once you got it in place, you want to go ahead and make sure it's going to function. You don't have any screw heads in the way. You need to start testing things as you go. Make sure you haven't blocked anything up. That works fine. Now I want to put the bottom latch on. Bottom latch goes on very similar. We need to put our center mark on there at two and a quarter. So we'll mark the door at two and a quarter. There again, this door's got a few holes in it from earlier demonstrations, but we can make it work just fine. Design hardware gives us a nice template for the bottom latch, clearly marked for the bottom latch. Now it has a line on it for the bottom of the door. What I always like to do is take my razor knife and just cut that line off. They're gonna cut a V in it to modify it a little bit so we can find that center line. I'll take that template, I'll hold it on the bottom of the door I'll line it up on that center line, and then I'll mark it. Mark those three holes, and there we go. Now, I always like to pre-drill those holes, even with the self-drilling, self-tapping screws. It's just easier, especially working down low like this or when you're stretching and working up high. I'll take three screws, go ahead and attach that bracket. Okay, now we've got the bottom bracket on, we've got the center of the panic attached, we've got our top strike on. We want to go ahead and take our rods, time to install our rods onto the device. These rods have a threaded end on them and a non-threaded end. This panic device, 2000V, is for a 6.8 or a 7.0 door. Since we're putting it on a 7.0 door, we're probably going to have to cut our rods. Now earlier, we threaded this on about halfway, and what we did, we had marked the rod and cut it. So in this demonstration, the rod is the right length, but what you'll have to do, more than likely, cut two to four inches off of the rod and then redrill the hole into the rod for the cutter pin. But for us, the rod is good, it's two length. What you need to do is thread it up high enough so you can get it over top of the strike where it needs to drop on and then drop it down and thread it back down until your cotter pin will line up. You want to go ahead and set your cotter pin in it at this time. Turn that rod. until the hole lines up, and you want it to line up with everything at rest. You don't want to have to raise the rod, and you don't want to have to push the bar in. You want everything in like a neutral position. If you raise the rod a little bit, it'll lock the top strike, and you don't want to do that. So you just kind of leave it all at ease. Take your cotter pin and slide it right in there. Now when I'm just starting out setting this, I don't bend the cotter pins up all the way. Just spread them a little bit to make sure they don't fall out on you. There you go. Now you got the top rod attached, the top strike attached. You can go ahead and test it. Make sure it'll flip over. Looks like it functions pretty good. What I do with my hand a lot of times, I hold my hand up here instead of a strike so I can keep testing it. From this point on, I'll test it lots of times. Every time I add a piece of hardware, I'll test it and make sure it still works. So now we're ready to put the bottom rod on. The bottom rod 
really just a threaded strike. Threads right into the rod. The round spike that drops in this hole will drop down to lock the bottom portion of the door. What I do is thread it on about halfway on to the threaded shaft. And then you want to set the safety nut on there and you want to make sure you lock it. You don't want that to unwind. And we'll take it, drop that back in there, and we'll get your cotter pin. Do the same thing. You want to come up here with your rod. You want to line it up, put it in there. Now again, this rod has already been cut to length from a previous demonstration. What you want to do to find your length, you want to bring that rod up to be within about a half an inch of the bottom of the door. And you would mark it right here at this point and you would cut it. Because we've already got these cut, we'll just go ahead and proceed with putting the cotter pins in them, lining them up. There again, you want to put the cotter pin in when it's at rest. You don't want to put any torque on it. You don't want it to be open. You want the door to be in the locked position. And then we'll just take that pin, bring it up here, bend it a little bit, just to put a little pressure on it so it won't fly off on us, slide out of there. Now we'll test it. Make sure it functions, works real good. We've got the top rod on, we've got the bottom rod on, we've got everything. We're ready to attach the strike onto the frame. Now remember we laid this out when we laid out the top strike on the door. So we're going to get the top, get the strike out of the box. If you look at the strike, it's got three holes in it. Two large slotted holes and one hole right in the center. Now what we want to do with that, we want to take that slotted hole and that's where we want to screw it on there. Run your screw in the center of the slotted hole and into your, on your strike. That way you have a little bit of movement. Now in this case, this one is already pre-drilled. What we'd do if we were drilling it, I would drill them with a 3 inch drill bit. Go ahead and then run your self-tapping, self-drilling screw in there. You want to only run the two screws in into the large slots. Save the third screw for your final adjustment. Now, you want to make sure your panic is in the open position, which means the strike is down like this. We want to test it. We want to swing it in, close it, see if it latches, see if it opens. There you go. Now, it's nice and snug, it's fit tight. So what we want to do is go ahead and attach our third screw in here. Point of the slotted screw holes are, if you needed to, move this in and out, see you had a lot of weather strip or something on here, and this door wasn't latching properly, you would adjust that before you put your third screw in. Your third screw locks it in so it will not slide. Now we're basically set. We've got our rods on, we've got our latches on, we're ready to put our trim covers on, dress it out, and be done with it. I always like to start with the trim covers on the bottom. Keep in mind, all the small screws for the head, the trim, the head, and the end cap are all the same size. So you just want to get them, make sure you got them out, ready to go, and get started. When you put these caps on, you'll notice there's notches in them. Those notches go over the screw tabs to hold the device in place. It makes it very simple to line that up. Now I always like to put those on with a hand screwdriver just because it's just too easy to strip them otherwise. You don't want to booger them up, you don't want to chew them out or strip them. Who knows, you may be the one that has to come back and take it apart later on to adjust it. And it just looks more professional to run it in there. Nice and tight, but not too tight. If you do use your cordless drill, go ahead and set your clutch way back on it. Just run them in snug. You want to make sure you didn't bind your rod up, everything still works. You want to test it, make sure it jumps up and down, you're good. Now we're going to go ahead and put the top on. Same thing, it's got the notches in it. It will ride there pretty straight for you. Take your screws. This is the point where, like I said earlier, I'll be testing this thing a lot. Every time I put one of these end caps back on, Every time I put them in, I test it. 
make sure you didn't bind it up. Because if you put all of them on and you go to test it and it doesn't work, then you have to start taking everything off to figure out where you got it wrong. So, caps on, works just fine. Now, before we set this center cap on here, we want to go ahead and set our cotter pins, make sure they're out of our way. We don't want to bend them to where they'll hit a screw. If you want to bend them over, curl them up nice so they're not going to come out on you. Same on the bottom. Now with those all bent, nice in place, same thing, go ahead and give it a test. Now look at that. This right here, this cotter pin, starting to hit that screw head. Bound us up just a little bit. Go ahead and bend it over out of the way. Put that cap on. Same thing, I'll use a hand screwdriver to put these in. Line it up, you can clearly see where they go. Pretty easy. Now one of the nice things about this 2000B panic device, it comes with a filler plates for the edge of the door and for the frame. So if you're putting this panic on, say to retrofit a door for some reason, the door already had the standard lock on it, standard strike in the frame, it comes with plates to fill those up. Just helps give you a nice finished job when you're done. We'll put those on very last. They really have no function in the panic itself. They're truly decorative. You can imagine if I was trying to run these in there with a power driver, how fast I would spin them out and break them off. You want to get them started, get them threaded in those holes. You want to make sure you get all your screws in. You don't want to leave any of them out. Keep track of them all. It just looks unfinished. I don't care how well it works, how well it functions. If it's missing parts, it just looks unfinished. Now we want to test it. Seems to work just fine. Top latch works. Like I said, we want to test it throughout the process. Now we're ready to put the rod guards on. I always take the rod guard and I like to install it 20 inches down from the top, 20 inches up from the bottom. I do that on a 6.8 or a 7.0 door. That 20 inch number is just a good number to remember. And if you're putting a, several panics on in the same building, they all come out to look alike. Easy to remember. Again, Design Hardware gives you self-drilling, self-tapping screws for this. We'll go ahead and run those in. In this case, it happens to be pre-drilled. But you don't necessarily need to pre-drill these. These are a very small screw. They run right in. They hold real well on that steel door. Make sure you got a little play in your rod. You didn't bind anything up. We'll go ahead and put the other one on. Make sure everything functions real well. You want to have a little play in that rod. You don't want to bind it up real tight. Now we'll go ahead and put our infillers on. These infillers are just a nice little feature. They come with screws ready to go. What you've got, this is the old hole where the strike bolt used to be. Filler plate fits in there real nice. Run it in there, run the screw in. I always run these in too with the hand screwdriver. But chances are these will go in pretty easy because this probably ended up taking the old knob off of here to begin with. So you know these screws will go in good. We'll put that in filler in. We've got another one to fill on the strike. A lot of times if there is an old strike there, you do want to take it out. You don't want to leave that lip strike on there. It just looks a little tacky. So you have a lip strike and nothing for it to hit. Okay, now we got the edge filler on here, it just looks a lot cleaner. Now I don't know if you've got an ADA strike in here or something, you want to go ahead and take it out. It gives you a nice blank filler plate, no hole and no lip on it. it makes it universal, it'll work for right hand or left hand frame. It just looks better. 
Looks more finished to go ahead and put the plate in so it'll leave the old strike. Plate in, comes with a couple screws, ready to go. Screw that in there. Time those property management people put a few hundred coats of paint on that, it'll just simply disappear. Now, we've got our plates on, we've got all the covers on, we've got everything on. Give it one last try, make sure we're good to go. There you go. Now, this particular door, the strike drops into the threshold. In this case, we have a wooden platform down there that we attach to. So what you want to do is, when the door comes closed, you want to make sure that strike drops all the way down. Okay. Now we want to set the bottom rod to drop into the frame. Lots of times this will go into a threshold, but in our case we're going to drop it down into this wood. Bring the rod down, you want to mark it where it goes, open the panic back up, swing the door out of your way. You'll need to drill a nice hole in there. Normally a half inch drill bit will work for you. Drill that hole. I think it'll go good in a, in a wooden threshold, I mean a metal threshold, but if you're putting it in like a tile floor, BCT or something, and you chew it up a little bit, that's all right because we've got the drops right in, comes right back out. I didn't have it in the last one. Drops right in, comes right back out. Now we've got the hole lined up. Take the round strike plate that they give us, center on the hole. We're going to use the small nails they give you to set it. It also comes with small screws, depending on what you're going into. If you're putting this on an aluminum threshold, you truly might not even need to put a strike plate down. You do a nice job of drilling that hole right in the threshold. Just get that strike to drop right down in it. And there you go. Drops right in place. Comes right out. That's all it takes.